on the subject of fire steel, um, I understand that these teeth on the spine on this ramp are for fire steel. I would imagine that it's intended that you would scrape the teeth against the fire steel, but I'm really not sure. It might be <laughs> just a ramp to keep the fire steel from coming up and hitting your hand or something. And maybe you're supposed to use, you know, this part of the blade. I doubt it. I really, I have used, you know, teeth from a, a saw on a fire steel before, and it's, you know, you just produce a tremendous amount of sparks. So I imagine that these teeth are for that. Um, I expect fire steel to come in a week, and uh, so I'll know a lot more about it when it comes. So there she is, folks. The handle is black canvas micarta. I love it. It feels so good in your hand. When I have gloves on, it does feel pretty slippery. But uh, I saw that Virtua Vice uh, actually took a little wet dry paper and roughed it up, which I, I probably will do eventually. But for now, I just couldn't be happier. If it works, don't fix it. So uh, I don't know. I think for now I'm going to leave this baby alone. Don't mess with perfection. One other thing I'd like to share with you that's kind of cool is you notice that I have an extra belt loop to keep the, uh, the knife in place, keep it from moving around as I'm hiking. Uh, what I did is I just took an old ripped up pair of blue jeans, even worse shape than these are in actually, and I just simply cut off one of those loops and sewed it on. I think it was this one and it just fits and, you know, retains the knife perfectly. So I recommend that you do the same. All right, as you can see, we're down in the flat area. And after all that hiking and everything, I decided that I want a nice hot cappuccino. So we're going to use the Bark River Bravo 2 to uh, whip up a fire for just that purpose. The first thing that we need is a baton so that we can process some wood for the fire. And I found just the thing right over here. That looks like a perfect baton piece of wood. So uh, we're not going to do any chopping. We're actually going to put the saw viver to work. So here we go. All right, we have a limb in the way. So out comes the Bravo 2. On goes the lanyard. Um, I'm not actually chopping. I'm just doing a little delimbing at this point. And as you can see, it does quite an incredible job of that. And we have no damage to the blade whatsoever because I'm being civilized for a change. All right, let's proceed. Definitely binding, oh man. Okay, we'll deal with that. There we go. Okay, so we have some delimbing to do. And we'll get to that in just a minute. That's good. Binding up, but we were probably at a point there where we could have just broken it. Now that, my friends, is a nice baton. No damage at all to the blade. Thank <laughs> you. 
one disadvantage to snapping the log the way I did uh, instead of just sawing all the way through is that you end up with these remnants, <laughs> which are, uh, I guess it's no big. But anyway, we're going to take this log and we are just going to baton it in half. That remnant is a problem. Okay, we're going through nicely. Uh, frankly, this is the first time that I've I've had to take so many different bites. But uh, hey, this is reality, and uh, this is the worst case scenario, and it's still just fine. Just like butter. Okay, inspecting that blade very closely. Absolutely no problem at all. You know, you have a choice. You can either use wood that's not solid as a rock, or uh, you can just be a little civilized and everything's going to be fine. Being civilized is just a little bit against my nature just isn't who I am. So basically we're gonna uh, burn this wood down until the flames are all subsided and uh, we just have nice hot coals left and that's when we're gonna do our heating up of the water for the cappuccino. That's also when I cook the burgers, etc. So absolutely not a scratch, not a blemish, just a perfect, perfect knife. Look what I found. For getting a fire going, there's nothing better than fat wood. Fat wood occurs when a, a tree falls over and <laughs> leaving, you know, part of the stump. The stump, not knowing that the tree is gone, continues to pump all kinds of sap uh, up through the wood. Ooh, there's some nice stuff right there. And what happens is that wood becomes completely saturated with sap and it's real flammable. So let's see if we can shave off a few pieces of this fat wood to get the fire started. There's nothing like fat wood to get the fire going. Wow, look at that. And nothing like a Bravo 2 for cutting some pieces of fat wood. You know, also, uh, I wanted to mention something else, and that is, uh, you know, people think that you can't choke up on a larger knife like this, but, you know, I feel that uh, if you're using this part of the blade, I mean, <laughs> you can get a, a lot of, of power. Anyway, I'm just up in the air here. If I, you know, set this on something, um, I'm sure, look, look at that. That's, that's plenty of power. And of course you can always, you know, do this, which certainly isn't as comfortable as a Bravo one would be. But I think all in all for what it is, this thing definitely rocks. Um, I made some real fine feather sticks for the bottom of the uh, pile, the uh, fire starting pile, and then suspended slightly above those, I've got some, you know, very slightly larger sticks. I shouldn't say very slightly, they are a little larger. And then I'm just going to step up and step up until we use some of that wood that we split a little while ago, and eventually we'll have a real nice fire. Here we go. We have the 
trusty old TBL that I spoke of earlier. So let's get it going on here. Have a little bit of wind that can be help or it can be a hindrance. So I'm going to get ready for uh, some bigger stuff right away that I have sitting around. Talk to you in a few minutes. Okay, we're getting more and more serious here. Notice uh, we're leaving some nice air spaces and giving the fire a chance to catch up. Whoa, that was a bad move, but it's okay. Always want to leave a little air space there to get going. That should be okay. And this is just going to continue. Um, just adding more and more stuff until we uh, have a significant fire. And then at that point, we'll wait until the fire burns down into just coals. And once it's coals, we won't have those, you know, dirty flames with all that fat wood creating all that soot all over the place. We'll have a nice, clean... Uh, just red hot coal fire. And uh, that's when we'll put our cappuccino on. Okay, now that the fire has subsided and, and most of the smoke is gone, leaving nothing but red hot coals, you know, in the daytime, it's pretty hard to see red hot coals, but we'll definitely see the result of them. Uh, anyway, we have the, the uh, cup of water in the fire. Um, <laughs> I used some recycled materials. That's the top of a, a can of vegetables or something that I, uh, you know, used. But I'm always trying to go green, trying to save the planet in every little way that I possibly can. And in about five minutes, we'll have boiling water and uh, we'll mix in a little cappuccino. I have the mix here and uh, it'll be very enjoyable. Let's see how our, our water's looking here. Whoa. I'd say that's boiling. What do you think? Yeah. Time for cappuccino, folks. <laughs> all right. And after all of that, she came through like a champ. It appears that we have quite a bit of sap on the blade, which is really no problem. And I'll show you why. Just a little bit of denatured alcohol. Uh, and I'll show you really does a great job to remove sap and, you know, whatever else is all over the knife. You have to be so careful with this blade, man. Just remember, when you're out in the wilderness, you've got to be much, much more careful than any other time because it would take a long time for anyone to come and help you. You don't have any cell coverage. So remember, uh, some of the rules, you know, are don't get injured yourself. Carry all of the safety gear and equipment. Don't do anything to injure anybody else. And certainly also don't injure the forest or the wilderness. Part of making sure that you don't damage the forest or wilderness at all is being absolutely positive that your fire is completely out before you walk away from it. That's pretty clean. As good as new. We have hardly dulled the edge at all. It is gorgeous, and it is ready to go out again. Oh, man, that's good. Cappuccino right off of the campfire. There's nothing better than basically anything out in the wilderness. Everything tastes better, and uh, boy, this is really hitting the spot after that pretty serious hike that you went on with me, and I want to thank you for coming along with me today. Hope you had as much fun as I did. We'll definitely do this again, and I'll see you then. Bye.